Hello again, do-it-yourselfers. Terry Peterman, the internet electrician, and welcome to another video short on current topics at electrical-online.com and of course, right here on YouTube. Today we're doing a laundry room renovation. It's part of, I'd say, phase two of our renovations that we started back in June at our home here in British Columbia. So now we've torn apart the laundry room because we just didn't have enough of that stress of renovating over the last three months. So. Let's get started with this one. I'm gonna step back and show you what we got going on. Okay, so what we had in this laundry room, we had the washer on my right, dryer on the left, and we had a fridge left over from the kitchen renovation. It was a good fridge, so we thought we'd keep that as a spare refrigerator, and it's been parked in the garage. And so that's hindered me having vehicles parked in the garage as well. So we're gonna move that fridge into here and we're putting in an LG stacked washer dryer set here, front load. So of course what that meant is having to remove the dryer receptacle, a 120, 240, 30 amp outlet here. We've had to move it up to here. So what I had to do, it was fairly simple because I've got attic access right here in this same room, panels back in the corner of the garage there. So all I had to do is remove this box from here, loosen off the cable clamp, and it was stapled in this wall, so it took a little bit of pulling, but I was able to jerk that cable back up into the attic. And then, of course, being it's going to be higher, but a little further away from the panel, I had enough cable to put my receptacle up here for the dryer. So that was a fairly simple fix. Just had to shut off the breaker, of course, pull that cable up and reconnect everything here, mounting that box. Now, the other dilemma is where our fridge is going to go we have no receptacle here so you need a dedicated circuit for that and in the old system here they used to have an electric hot water heater which is just right beside the camera there where that camera position is and someone over the years changed that out to a gas water heater so abandoned in the wall was a 12-2 240 volt circuit so a red and a black and a ground that was just poked into the wall and in my panel i found two wires Red and the black moretted together and abandoned in the panel. So no attachment to the breaker. I guess they figured it was okay to just poke that wire into the wall, which it is as, as soon as you know that you've made it so nobody can reconnect that cable again to a breaker. Now, they probably, if they wanted to do it right, they should have labeled those wires saying where they go and where they've been abandoned, but they didn't. So I was able to find them through the attic again. I could see that red cable going down into the wall and I looked behind the water heater and there was a hole in the drywall where before the cable must have just poked out and tied into the junction box on the hot water heater. So I was able to grab a hold of that cable and with a lot of tugging and pulling, which I'm sure I'm going to feel tomorrow, I was able to get it loose from the staples and pulled it out and there was no damage at all to the jacket. So those staples must have just popped or I was able to pull them through without harming the jacket of that cable. So. It's gonna, it's just hanging out of the attic access. I'll be showing you that. I'm gonna be able to put a junction box on that, tape off one of the conductors to show that it's a now a neutral, and I'll probably use the black for that, tape it off as a white wire. Same in the panel, tie it to the neutral bar. Then I'm just gonna add a piece of 14-2 to go down here. I'm gonna mount a receptacle box, and then I've gotta do some drywall patching because we've got a, a bigger hole here than the regular receptacle box that I'm now going to use for my washer, or sorry, my refrigerator receptacle. So having said that, let's just get started with the project. And first thing I need to do is cut this drywall out and I'm going to mount my receptacle box and then I'm going to cut a piece of drywall to patch in there. All right, so I had a little piece of drywall left over from the other part of our renovation. So I've marked it out here. The patch, I'm going to use the blocking that was in behind here for that range box or for that uh, dryer box. I'm going to use it for backer when I screw this drywall to it. I'll show you that. It's not a really a drywall show, but it's always part of the, the job a lot of times when you're doing renovations. So it's good to be handy in all aspects of, of home renovations and do-it-yourself projects. So here's my receptacle box. It's going to be going into here on the stud so once I've got this hole cut I'm gonna mark out where the box goes so I'm gonna 
cut the hole out of the drywall and put it all back together. So I'm going to use my tool here. I did a video once saying what tool you couldn't do without, that I couldn't do without, and that's electric drill, a, a cordless drill. Probably still is the only tool that I would not go without. However, this guy's a close second. Man, I wish I had these when I was a kid. An oscillating tool. This one's from Ryobi and Home Depot. Ah, uh, Home Depot, if you're listening, I could sure use a, a full set. So if you'd like to sponsor a video, just get a hold of me, will you? Anyhow, these are great tools, man. I, I wish I had them when I was apprenticing. We didn't, but uh, makes life so much easier. <laughs> Now before, the way I'd have done that is with a keyhole saw or a utility knife, scratching and clawing and busting out drywall. Look how much easier this is. This half moon blade is a drywall saw blade. They make blades for all kinds of applications. Just make sure I get those corners. So I'm going to be able to put in my patch piece. I'll just mark it, cut this chunk so it fits. And like I mentioned, put the wood in as a backer and throw in some drywall screws. All right, so I've got my box mounted, my patch cut, my backer block in here, nice and solid, three screws to hold it in place. And before I screw this in, I'm just going to test fit it. And we're going to run the wire first, fish it down before we block it off. But nope, it's going to fit just perfectly. So now we'll fish our wire down into the wall using the old hole that was there for the rain, for the uh, dryer cable. Should just drop right down, be able to grab it with my hand, feed it into the box. So up I go into the very hot attic. Okay, just got back down from the attic. You can see one end of my cable hanging here through the attic access. And I've got it coming out of the wall here, so I'll just have to feed it into my box and then make a junction box splice those two cables together up in the attic, put a cover plate on it, and we're ready. Rough in stage is over and we're ready to put on our receptacle there. Okay, so you can see my cable coming down through the cable clamp here, and I've got my ground wire around the ground screw, 180 degrees, snug down tightly. I got my drywall piece in place. I just got to throw a couple screws into it, tuck these wires back in, and we're ready for the receptacle after we're done patching and painting in here. And just worth noting too here in my Weekend Wiring Warrior course that's actually happening right now as this filming's taking place, in the last Q&A session it came up as to why we staple cables. I had to explain to somebody why we do stapling of the cables. It's mostly to keep the cables out of the way when you're putting on the wall board. So stapling serves purposes no really not much more than that. And that's to keep it out of the way like I said so when your wiring's all in place in the rough end stage then the wall borders come along just so they don't pinch them into the studs. So it keeps everything nice and neat and out of the way. Now when you're fishing a cable in like this, of course we've pulled that old range car, the dryer cable through the staples and so they're still on the stud somewhere here. Well when you're fishing in cables like this, obviously you can't staple that and you're not going to pull off the wall board just to staple it. So there's nothing bad's going to happen to that cable inside that wall cavity. Now the code allows you to just do what you have to do a lot of times to get things done and of course you can't staple that cable down in that stud space. All right, ready for some patching. Okay, so you see I've put the cables into an old junction box that I just had laying around, so I'll make use of it. It's just gonna be stuck up here on the, one of the trusses in the attic. Make my splices, I'll put a cover plate on it. I'm even gonna mark that cover plate as to what circuit it's, it is and where it's fed from and where it's going. I'll show you that after I'm done. I did change my mind here because I had a black and a red 240 volt cable here that I'm going to go back to 120 with. 
I said earlier I would take the black cable and tape it white, the black conductor I should say, but when I got thinking I might as well have white to a red that I've taped as a white and I use just white electrical identification tape and then my black to black will be fairly easy for someone down the road to figure out what's going on. We've got black to black and a white to a red that is now taped white as our neutral. So I'll do the same of course in the receptacle box and the same in the panel. So I'll just finish making these splices. I got my ground twisted together. And my neutrals, as I said, white is going to be to the red taped, now white. You can see that. Just start those with my lineman plier. With two wires, it's not so important to uh, start them with the plier. But some wire nuts, they recommend you do start to twist them with the plier and some they say don't pre-twist your wires, just use a wire nut. As long as your ends are even, you get a good splice. And my blacks. And again, I'm splicing 12 gauge to 14 gauge, but I'm going to feed this circuit with a 15 amp breaker. So that's okay. You can always use a bigger wire than the breaker rating, larger gauge wire, but you can't go the other way around. And also, you may notice that the insulation on my 14 gauge cable is actually thicker than on the 12 gauge cable and that's because I had laying around again a piece of NMW, direct earth burial cable. I was out of 14 gauge NMD, non-metallic dry, so I used the cable that's suitable for direct burial for wet locations. Now again there you can always go one way but not the other. You can use a outdoor cable inside but you can't use an inside cable outside. Makes no difference really just that the jacket is thicker and more, more uh, UV resistant and it's just thicker insulation on both the conductors and on the outside jacket. So I'll tuck these into the box. And then I'll go get a cover plate and I'll just screw this up into the truss somewhere. It's going to be close to the attic access here, of course, quite visible. I'll just screw it onto the trusses up there. Now, I gave some thought to making this a receptacle because when I was working in the attic up there uh, on a previous project, there are no receptacles up there to plug in a trouble light or anything. However, there's another convenience outlet just below me here, below the attic access. So I thought rather than have a receptacle up there, when you're up there, you're always going to have the door open, the attic access open, and I can just plug into that receptacle for it's another five feet away from here. So no problem there, but it wouldn't have been a bad idea to make this a receptacle up there, a usable outlet for, like I said, plugging in a, a utility light. Okay, there you have it. My junction boxes together, cover plate on. And I labeled that plate just to avoid any confusion for someone down the road. Main panel circuit number seven is where I'm going to feed it from. Laundry room fridge. I'm going to go screw that up into the trusses. And when I mentioned earlier that you don't have to staple it inside the wall when you're fishing a cable, up here where you do have access, you definitely want to staple your wires all neatly to the sides of the trusses and make sure they're out of the way of the insulation and not going to get damaged in any way. So we'll do that, staple those cables all into place and mount that box. And I'll go show you what we're doing in the panel. So here we are inside my panel and you can see the black and red conductors that have been moretted together here. That was the old water heater wires. Now my breaker position is going to go right here where I've got a spare spot. So the black wire is going to have to reach over and make to that breaker and it's going to be tight but we'll make it but the red wire would not the one we're going to identify as a neutral with white tape it wouldn't have made it down here to this neutral bus so we're going to have to run it right down direct route and make it to the bottom of the neutral bar on that side and then my hot will come over to this side to the breaker i'll show you a close-up when i get that uh, red wire identified as a white 
and show you where it's attached. All right, so of course I wasn't able to work on this panel because uh, you couldn't see through my back with the camera. So I had to make the connections. My panel's mounted inside a cabinet here, so there's no room to get the camera and me in. But here's that red wire that I labeled or I identified as white with white tape. You really only need two, three, four inches to do, but I taped it all the way up through the panel here just so there's no confusion that that's my neutral. And then over here, barely long enough to make it down to this breaker, breaker seven in my panel. That's one, three, five, and seven. And you can see the hot wire now, the black wire going up alongside the breakers here. And as I said, just barely long enough to make it to that breaker position. I would have had to juggle things if, if it didn't work. But before that breaker position was up here. So they had cut it at that time to make it to that breaker, but should be all good. Got the breaker off. I'm gonna put a little piece of tape over that breaker so nobody turns it on until I am finished and I put a receptacle in that, in that receptacle box that's gonna be for the fridge. And there you have it, the panel cover back on. I got the panel labeled. Laundry room looks like boom, but hey, I never said I was a really good printer. A little tough to do reaching into the cabinet like that. So laundry room, fridge, breaker seven. And as you can see, I put a piece of tape over that breaker so Nobody inadvertently turns it on until we get a receptacle in place. All right, so that wraps up this video short on current topics. Adding this here fridge receptacle in our laundry room. Got some patching to do over here. We've got our existing washer receptacle that was there, our hot and cold taps, and our drain, drain riser here. I'm going to have to do something to kind of neaten up around here, frame in maybe around those. I would put one of those washer boxes in here, but the drain line is over here and that plumbing's all buried in the wall, so I'm not gonna interrupt that. And the new dryer uplet here, ready for the Stacker LG front load washer and dryer. So again, please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like and ring that little notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video. I'm gonna need an awful lot of views on this to help pay for the new washer and dryer and all the renovation work we've been doing. Thanks again for watching, Terry Peterman, The Internet Electrician.